hello my dear students welcome to my today's online class on at one another topic at another topic in the phylum arthropoda that is on sense organs in arthropoda uh, while talking about general characters of phylum arthropoda I have told you that uh, sense organs are in the form of photoreceptor organs like simple eyes and compound eyes, then balancing organs like statuses, and then tactile organs or feelers like antenna, antennule, etc. But as per your syllabus, you are studying sense organs. in the sense only the photoreceptor structures that is uh, simple eyes and uh, compound eyes okay in other words this chapter is about uh, learning vision in arthropoda okay so we are not touching upon other sense organs we are laying our hands only on understanding of simple eyes and compound eyes now so this is uh, dr mera bk associate professor and head department of zoology maharani science college for women palace road bangalore one and uh, yeah these are the ocelli or simple eyes present in the insects you know in insects you find both simple eyes and compound eyes this is how the simple eyes look like then this is a compound one functional unit of compound eye that is omatidium of cockroach that is periplaneta so if you are able to understand all this today we are done with our class okay with this brief introduction we shall start the class so arthropods possess simple as well as compound eyes and the compound eyes have evolved in arthropoda and very unique to arthropods and not to be seen in any other group of animals okay a uh, very unique very special to arthropods then one group of arthropods that is insects they possess both the type of eyes simple eyes as well as compound eyes and uh, they happen to be the most successful animals on earth okay now we should try to understand vision in crustaceans and vision in other classes also whatever it is the basic functional unit of the compound eye that is omatidium basic structure remains the same now let us see now crustacea includes arthropods like prawns crabs lobsters shrimps barnacles water flies etc they possess a pair of compound eyes for vision right and uh, these compound eyes are present in insects also mostly we will be concentrating on the compound eye of uh, periplaneta okay now uh coming to the prawn you know they possess a pair of stalked hemispherical compound eyes on the anterior side of cephalothorax below the rostrum you must have been taught this when you are learning the external morphology of prawn now each compound eye is made up of a large number of 
independent visual units called pomatidia which are connected to the optic nerve so the structural and functional units of uh, compound eye is uh, omatidia okay omatidium singular and omatidia plural now if you consider a single omatidium it is divisible into an outer dioptrical region please understand i'll show you the diagram later each omatidium is divisible into the outer dioptrical region and it is meant for receiving and focusing the light rays one part and the other part is inner sensory region for perceiving light and sending the nerve impulse to the brain and the brain analyzes the impulses as image of the object so basically omitridium is divisible into two regions outer dioptrical region meant for receiving and focusing the light rays and there is one more inner sensory region meant for perceiving the light and sending the nerve impulse to the brain and the brain analyzes the impulses as image of the object okay now you can see the diagram here this is the structure of a single omatidium uh diagram wise this is the omatidium of a periplaneta that is cockroach okay but basic structure of either a cockro of a fiber an insect or a crustacean remains same so now let us understand the structure of a matidium whether it's of insect or of crustacean okay now so the outermost layer is the cuticle you know that it is the exoskeleton and uh, this cuticle on the surface is modified as cornea it becomes transparent in case of um, in the place where omatidia are present and it is modified as cornea okay and gives the necessary protection and also allows the light rays to enter the eye okay so you can make out the uppermost layer is the cuticle which is modified into the cornea what it does it gives necessary protection and also allows the light rays to enter the eye okay then below the cornea you can see a pair of carniagen cells okay below the cornea you can see a pair of carniagen cells what do they do they secrete fresh cornea in case of wear and tear so in this ppt in this diagram you have learnt only two things the cuticle in the area of omatidia being modified into a corneal structure and below the cornea you find a pair of uh, carniagen cells what it does it secretes fresh cornea when there is wear and tear of the existing cornea by chance okay now i have posted the same diagram to continue my explanation on the structure of omatidium a lens like crystalline cone okay the light blue or greenish colored structure in the diagram so is present beneath the carniagen cells and serves to focus light rays inwards okay so next to cornea next to carniagen cells you find a crystalline cone which is located beneath the carniagen cells and serves to focus the light 
inwards all right then this crystalline cone is surrounded by four cone cells or vitrillae four cone cells are vitrillae what do they do they serve to provide nourishment to the cone that is crystalline cone okay then next layer is the sensory cell layer okay and these cells are called rhabdomes these are elongated and transversely striated and these are basically sensory in function okay so here you can see the diagram okay diagram a which gives ls of omotidium okay ls of omotidium and diagram b is actually the ts through the region a a what is labeled there and diagram c is actually through the region b b okay so you have to carefully observe these structures all right then again i have posted the same diagram to continue my explanation on the structure of omotidium several retinular cells are present which surround the rhabdom and encirculate okay to provide nutrition and protection right so retinular cells surround the rhabdom and provide nutrition and protection then you find chromatophore cells chromatophore cells are nothing but pigmented cells which are responsible for separating one gametodium gametidium from the other so that they remain as independent units all right so chromatophores iris pigmented region it is labeled like that so these are chromatophores or pigment cells and they are responsible for separating the gametidia from one another so that they remain as independent units okay and they are located around the cone cells and retinal cells and one speciality is that they can shrink or expand to increase or decrease the intensity of light that enters the eye i think both this we have covered all different parts of an omotidium right now so after having learned about the structure of omotidium different parts you should know what is mosaic vision okay what is mosaic vision the compound eye you know is not capable of giving distant vision and sharp vision so the type of vision what you see in arthropods because of compound eyes okay is not distant vision and sharp vision but it is very efficient in picking up motion and in providing 360 degree view as it is large globular and mounted on a movable stock okay so the vision here is basically good at moving objects okay basic purpose is to escape from predators that's all all right then so each omotidium is capable of producing an independent image of a smaller part of the object seen and therefore not the entire object okay please note each omotidium is capable of producing an independent image of a small part of the object that is seen being seen and not the entire object so all these small images which are the results of functioning of different independent omotidia or the image all these images are combined in the brain 
to form a complete image of the object that is made up of small dots or mosaic of dots and therefore we call this type of vision as mosaic vision characteristic feature of uh, arthropods then the range of the compound eye is not more than a foot it cannot see an object which is beyond one foot and therefore no single omatidium can perceive the entire object so the movement of uh, the objects can be detected much more efficiently by the compound eye because as the object passes in front of the eye you know the omatidias which are in off according to their location in relation to the object so the compound eyes are good at visualizing the objects in motion not the distant image okay why this is possible because the omatidias which on and off according to their location in relation to the object okay then this characteristic of the compound eye helps the animal in detecting the movement of the predators so this is the basic adaptability there so helps the animal in detecting the movement of the predators and therefore escape from them and another characteristic noticeable feature of the compound eye is its flicker fusion rate okay its flicker fusion rate it means it can perceive action as successive independent frames of images and not as a continuous motion so it can perceive action as successive independent frames of images and not as a continuous motion okay so the flicker fusion rate of an arthropod in compound eye is about 50 frames per second whereas in human beings it is 12 to 15 frames okay per second this is the difference then by perceiving motion the compound eye helps the arthropods to escape from predators so the basic objective of the compound eye is give protection is to give protection to the animal that is to escape from the predators compound eyes are not good for sharp and distant vision please note then i should talk about the opposition or mosaic image mosaic image or opposition image both mean the same yeah this is perceived in bright light when light is bright this type of uh, image is formed here pigment cells in diaptical and sensory regions spread and completely separate the omatidia from each other so that the angle of vision of omatidium is just 1 degree and light rays coming directly from the front only can enter the omatidium whereas the light rays coming at an angle are absorbed by the pigment cells before they reach the rhabdomes i repeat this see the opposition image is perceived in bright light okay this cannot happen when the light is dim or crepuscular part of the day this is perceived in bright light see the pigment cells in the diaptical and sensory region spread and completely separate the omatidia from each other so that the angle of vision is just 1 degree and light rays coming directly from the front only can enter the omatidium while the light rays coming at an angle are absorbed by the pigment cells before they can reach the rhabdomes they never reach the image formed in brain is a mosaic of several dots each one of which is formed by an omatidium okay and please note each omatidium uses 
only a tiny portion of the total field of vision and then in brain these tiny images are grouped together to form a consolidated single image of the object since each dot is clearly separated from the other this type of image is called mosaic image or apposition image okay then the sharpness of the image depends on the number of material present in the particular arthropod and their isolation from one another okay the sharpness of the image depends on the number of material present in the compound eyes of that particular arthropod and therefore and also their isolation from one another okay then the other one the other type of vision is superposition image till now what i taught you is mosaic image or apposition image another type of image is formed called superposition image okay this type of vision occurs in dim light in nocturnal arthropods as against the apposition image or mosaic image which happens in bright light so here what happens let's see the pigment cells shrink to allow more light into the eye so that the vomitidia no longer remain optically isolated from each other therefore even oblique light rays make an entry to strike one or more vomitidia please note then this results in overlapping of adjacent blotches of images formed by different vomitidia and therefore the images are superimposed therefore this type of image is called superposition image because there is overlapping images being formed in the brain okay and the image is not sharp but very hazy because of overlapping images so they are not able to see that good in dim light okay because the image is overlapped it is superposition image okay so this is how the art an insect eye looks like so this is the transfer section through an insect eye showing all that lens crystalline cones primary pigment cells retinular cells rhabdome etc so in previous ppts i have shown the longitudinal section of uh, cockroach eye that is compound eye the structure remains more or less same even in other arthropods like crustaceans okay so this is transfer section through an insect eye okay now image formation as i was telling you there are two types superposition image and apposition image so the eyes which are responsible for the formation of superposition image are called scotopic eyes one more question and the eyes which are responsible for the formation of mosaic or opposition image are photopic eyes so these two terms you have to remember scotopic eyes and photopic eyes and here you can observe how the superimpose the light rays make an entry in case of uh, the superposition that is diagram a and in diagram b how exactly they enter at particular places that is photopic eyes okay then uh this is just a diagrammatic representation of the image formed by a compound eye and uh, diagram a is uh, mosaic image and diagram b is superposition image so in a you can see just light rays entering straight and where there is no overlapping but in b you can see that the rays are being overlapped right okay uh same thing uh, being depicted in different way that's all so same diagram okay so this is refracting superposition of compound eyes and 
focal apposition of compound eyes. Okay. So these are just different diagrams to show how exactly the two types of images are formed. All these you need not have to write in the exam. It is for you to understand. Basically, you have to practice the diagram of diagram of the vomitidium, okay, for compound eye, and diagram of an oscillus for simple eye, okay, which I am going to teach little later. So this is again how exactly the opposition compound eyes work, how exactly superposition compound eyes work. Here you can see all the three, you know. Units be working, and here you can see the concentrated light diffracting, right? Yeah. Then we shall talk about the simple eyes. Uh, we shall take the example of Scarpian, which belongs to the group Arachnida. So, Scarpians do not possess compound eyes. It possesses only simple eyes. Okay. Then it has a pair of large, median, indirect eyes. And three pairs of lateral direct eyes. When you are talking about simple eye, you should talk about median indirect eyes and lateral direct eyes. Okay. So large median indirect eyes and three pairs of lateral direct eyes, which function in different ways in different situations. Okay. They have different jobs to do. This is the diagram of. Uh, of course, this is the simple eye of an insect. You can see the cornea and that epidermal layer, hypodermal layer, then retinal cell and optic nerve like that. Okay, then. So the let us talk about median indirect eyes. See the median indirect eyes are large convex and covered with the thick cuticle which forms the cornea or the lens okay and uh, the hypodermis forms a thick vitreous body that nourishes the lens whereas in lateral direct eyes okay uh, there you find epidermis doing this job okay then the sensory rhabdomes point backwards towards the reflecting layer called tapetum and the rhabdoms are surrounded by many sensory retinal cells which transmit the nerve impulse to the optic nerve and then to the brain okay so median eyes of scarpia are used for vision in the night or in dark places because the dim light entering the eye is reflected by the tapetum to strike the rhabdomes again to form the vision, which is not so in case of the lateral direct eyes. All right. Then we shall talk about lateral direct eyes. These are small in size, three pairs, and located on the lateral sides of prosoma. You know, in arachnids, the body is divided into prosoma and opisthosoma, and these eyes are present on prosoma. So the eye is covered externally by a biconvex lens formed from the transparent cuticle. And please note, the epidermis forms a thinner vitreous body under the lens, not the hypodermis, as you see in the other type. Okay, median eyes. Then inside the eye cup are several rhabdomes which point directly towards the source of light. Please note tapetum is absent in these eyes. Okay. Tapetum is not present in lateral direct eyes. Therefore, the eye cup, okay, inside the eye cup are several rhabdomes which point directly towards the source of light as tapetum is missing in these eyes. Each rhabdom is connected on the posterior end to a sensory retinal cell which in turn is connected to the nerve. The lateral eyes are good to provide vision in daytime or in bright light. Okay. Whereas the median eyes are good to provide vision in dim light. So, in insect, you call them, simple eyes are called ocelli, ocellus singular, 
Ocelli plural. These are simple eyes, more or less similar to simple eyes of arachnids and provide the eye with distant vision. So for distant sharp vision, simple eyes are good. For nearer vision and to have the vision of the object which are in motion, compound eyes are good. So that's the reason why insects which possess both the simple eyes and compound eyes have become the most successful arthropods. Okay? Then, these also give nocturnal vision to night flying insects which find their way, uh, way by aligning them at an angle with moon or stars. And please not very important, by possessing both types of eyes, insects enjoy both types of visions, namely detection of movement with the compound eyes and a distant version with simple eyes or ocelli. Okay? Then, this is the structure of an insect type. Diagrammatic representation, what you write in your, what you can write in your exams. Okay? Uh, with this, I complete my talk on sensory organs in arthropoda, that is simple eyes and compound eyes. So, I have changed the title as vision in arthropoda since I have taught you the mosaic vision, okay, and the photopic type of vision, alright, super, super, impo, super imposition, okay, the image, both types of images I have taught. So, I have relabeled this chapter as vision in arthropoda and I have given here question bank. The simple eyes are also called for one mark. And you have to give an example which has a simple eyes. You can give scarpia only one mark. You should practice to draw a neat label diagram of a simple eye that is oscillus for three marks normally. Or sometimes they do ask for five marks if they ask description also. And the larval eyes are also called stemata. Larval eyes are called stemata. Okay. Then any four parts if you just mention four parts of a simple eye or an oscillus, you will get one mark. Then neat label diagram of omatidium for three marks and its description for five marks. Or give an account of simple eye and compound eye in arthropods for ten marks. Then functional unit of a compound eye, one mark. Mosaic image, you have to just say what it is. And uh, Neat label diagram and description of an amortidium. So, this is the question bank which you can answer. So, here are some references, online references, offline uh, uh, textbooks also I have given in my previous lectures. So, with this, I complete my talk on sense organs in arthropoda. Thank you for your patient hearing. Any doubts, you can contact me through my email ID or over WhatsApp. Okay. And you can leave your comments in the YouTube itself regarding the lecture. Any clarifications, you are most welcome. So, with this, now it is time for me to wind up.